Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how I do a complete oil and filter change on my 1976 Corvette Stingray. Now you're going to need a means of course to lift your vehicle and in this case I'm using my Quick Jack portable lift but um, a good set of uh, car ramps will work just as well and uh, ideally you want to have the vehicle level but sometimes you have to do what you have to do you can also get by uh, by using a floor jack but I strongly recommend if you're going to follow that approach that you have good jack stands because safety first now the first thing I do is I remove the oil filler cap and when that is done I go under the vehicle Okay, so this is the drain plug and the oil filter is right here. Everything looks good. Just trying to get my tools organized. I believe this one is a half an inch. have a catch pan over here. So we're going to let this drain for a couple of minutes and then I will remove the oil filter. Okay, so I have a flashlight down here, might as well use it, right? As you can see, this is almost done. Okay, so what I like to do is remove any old sealant with, uh, with this dental tool so you can really clean up all the threads properly and uh, a small metal bristle brush will really make this thing look brand new again. And then we can use some of this Permatex thread sealant. I like this better than using regular conventional Teflon tape. I think, it, I think it's better. It can be a little messy, but uh, not a big deal. That should be plenty to seal the threads. Yeah, you will have a little bit of old motor oil still dripping. Not a big problem. Then we're going to get this sucker started. You want it snug, you don't have to overdo it. 
So next is the oil filter. And I'm gonna use my superhuman strength to remove it. Well, I don't wanna show off, so I'm gonna use this one so you can see how this little tool works. Okay, and I have my catch thing here. Let's see, I hope this one doesn't make a big mess. Since I already drank, oh no, it's still gonna make one. We'll let it drain for a few minutes while I clean the floor. Okay. So there you have it. Get a paper towel. Clean this a little bit. It's all looking good. And now we have to prep the new filter. And we'll do that on the workbench. So that's that. Here's the filter oil and a very little oil spill here. Good deal. Okay, so what I like to do is prime the oil filter. Now, there are two schools of thought when it comes to this. And uh, you have to pick your poison, I guess, when it comes to that. I like to <laughs> prime it a little bit. And by that, I mean, I add a little bit of motor oil, both to the filter and my workbench. because I am like an environmental disaster when it comes to stuff like this, I guess. Anyway, I'm not gonna add so much oil that is gonna be coming out of it because it never fails that I, when I'm under the car, I'll move it in a certain way and uh, end up with some, uh, motor oil on my face so I'm just gonna add a little bit more and let it drink it up now what I was gonna say is the uh, the reason I do this is because when I started the car I wanted to have oil in it and um, therefore some oil pressure now, the other school of thought will tell you, yeah, but you're gonna have dirty oil. Basically, it hasn't been filtered. And they're right. But this is clean motor oil. So I'd rather have a little bit of oil pressure or as much as, as possible when I start the car, instead of letting this kind of do a cycle, fill up and filter and then circulate. So again, you pick whichever works best for you. And uh, again, I like to, nowadays what I do is about halfway full and uh, you can see some of the motor oil in there. And uh, don't forget to add some to the O-ring here that loops the, uh, the seal. 
Okay. So let's do this. I hope without dripping oil. You want to make sure that the filter is seated properly so it threads into the into the the block there and again since we lube the seal now by hand I'm just going to tighten this you don't need a to use the tool that I use for removing the thing. Okay, so here's the old motor oil. And um, it always cracks me up when people say, oh my God, that is so dirty. And I'll let you in a little secret. It's supposed to be dirty, okay? The motor oil gets very hot inside the motor and uh, it has detergents. And one of its functions is to keep things clean. So guess what? It's gonna get dirty. And this is not horrible. I mean, this is not solid black or anything like that. There's no metal pieces or anything like that. So this motor oil did its job. And uh, same goes for the filter, even though it's a cheapo filter work fine. As long as you're replacing these parts on a regular basis, you will be fine. Now, you have to dispose of the motor oil properly. Don't do anything stupid like going in the backyard and dumping it out there and oh, nobody will see it. No, we don't do that. We have to be responsible do-it-yourselfers. So, what you do is you save some of the um, oil jugs. And this is perfect. It's going to hold five quarts, maybe a shade more. You get a funnel and you carefully put that old motor oil in the jug and take it to the auto parts store. They, uh, they take used motor oil or you take it to the recycling center. I usually do that just for the, uh, for the coolant because auto parts stores do not, do not accept old engine coolant, but they will take the uh, old used motor oil. So anyway, I'm not trying to lecture or anything like that, but again, just a few pointers. You can do your research. I encourage you to do that and make your own decisions. That is the whole idea of DIY, right? But this is what works for me. This is how I do it. And uh, next, I'm gonna add fresh motor oil, my own mixture, of course. So we'll do that next. Okay, so I got ready to pour some fresh motor on there. Now we're going to see how the oil level is doing. Seems to be almost to the full line, but again, I have to start the car, let it run for a few seconds and uh, get that motor oil circulating. Oh no, it's it's about halfway there. I still, I still need to add motor oil. That's why we cleaned that um, dipstick. So let's carefully. There we go. Gonna add some motor oil. Give it a few seconds and we'll check the oil level again. much better and again what I have to do is start up the car 
and then check it again. When it comes to oil changes, I need to have a reminder of some sort. And I found these labels, they're really inexpensive and I'll provide a link below. And uh, what I do is I write the current date and then I add 2,000 miles to whatever number is on the, uh, on the clock. And that is my reminder as to when the next oil change is, is due. And it works really well. These labels are great. They don't have any adhesive. So you can put them on the, um, you know, like I do in, inside the door or uh, the windshield and um, they don't leave any residue when you uh, peel them off so they're great anyway i hope you found the video helpful and uh, if you have any comments please leave them below thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time take care bye